Hello, lovely listeners, and welcome back to your Water Trio episode for the week starting Monday, the 13th of May. And I'm here as always with the gorgeous Cass and the lovely Kel. Hi, gals. Hello. How are you both? Really good. How are you? Yeah, good. Excited to get in and into the nitty gritty of this middle week of May. So who's up first? What are we discussing this week? A few things. Um, I think really what we're going to talk about this week is the mid-month mood shift. Um, Mm -hmm. And Cass is going to take one part of it and I'm going to take the other. Should you go first, Cass, as the uh, Mars component here? Well, I could. However, um, Venus changes signs (laughs) before Mars Okay. All right. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Kel, and give this, you know, how you have to say to somebody sometimes, so do you want the good news or the bad news first? So you can start (laughs) with the good and I'll start with the good news. (laughs) (laughs) My favorite kind of news to give. Uh, Not that I'm averse to talking about difficult topics. I've been down many, many hard roads, but Venus in Taurus is not taking us down a hard road. This is one of the signature positive standouts for May. Venus moving into one of her home signs, Taurus, on the 15th of May. Now, Venus will be in Taurus until early June. I'm just going mm. to check my trusty ephemeris, which... It's the second, I think. Every um, astrologer should be familiar should have. with such a document. Yes, uh, a such none a of this um, post-ephemeris era stuff. I know, Hello. Chris, God love him. I, I have to record a YouTube on this. Anyway, Venus is in Taurus until the 9th of June. Now, I just think the next step, and maybe it'll be part of the last week's um, Mars-Jupiter thing, maybe astrologers will start flexing their muscle about how dilapidated is your ephemeris. Oh. Well, I use mine more than yours. <laughs> I think that I'm waiting I for that part. <laughs> oh, now mine. I can't lose my yeah. competition. I just kind of the cover is yeah, up yeah, no. from, you from win. thumbing it all the time. And oh, no. my God. Have you been chewing on yours, Cass? <laughs> Did you get hungry? <laughs> I'm always hungry. And, yeah, so it's stuck together with sticky tape. <laughs> I think you guys oh, win. Kel, yeah, love it. <laughs> so this is my – this is the second copy of this book that I have bought. This is the third, and that's how much I use my ephemeris, that I'm actually onto my third version of the same book. Mm-hmm. Anyway – um, Back to Venus and Taurus because we like and Taurus. our practical, tangible things. Practi- yeah, so Venus in Taurus is tactile. So actually a book versus an app mm-hmm. is a great example of Venus in Taurus. <laughs> but Venus in Taurus is a stabilizing energy that helps to solidify and unify things. So it can help you set your plans in stone. It can help you connect with someone in a way that's going to be more long-lasting Venus in Taurus is also about enjoying life's little luxuries. So this week, we're all really going to notice the astrological mood changing midweek, um, partly because Mars is changing signs in the same 24-hour period. Um, But Venus in Taurus wants to slow down. Venus in Aries over the last few weeks has been rushing around like a solo warrior woman, type A to the nth degree. Venus in Taurus is like, yeah, I'm going to get to that, but I'm in the middle of this right now. And so be ready to hit the brakes and to kind of take your time with things, to breathe a little. Venus in Taurus really encourages you to enjoy nature and to get back in touch with your body, not in a self-critical way. We can leave that to other Venus in play, play, Venus <laughs> placements. I'm looking at you, Virgo. Um, yes. <laughs> Venus in Taurus, she wants to enjoy her body. She likes a little bit more curve, a little bit more of that womanly shape. But Venus in Taurus likes some really good food. She likes touch. She likes smell. She likes beautiful sounds. So you really want to think about those sensory pleasures. Uh, so really it's, all it's the good the things. the whole experience. The whole package. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Cass, you actually have Venus in Taurus, so you could really like uh, uh, riff on this, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I could for a long time. Um. <laughs> That's what Venus likes to do too. <laughs> keep going. I don't, keep it I going. I don't like to be rushed in anything. I can meet a deadline, but other things, yeah, no. Um, I like to be fed, um, yeah, like the whole thing, you know. Like it has to be like the experience, you know. The five senses have to be evoked. Um, and 
It's funny because Venus is going to be in Taurus throughout my entire, or it'll dip into Gemini sort of on the last leg of, of my, you know, month in the U.S., and a lot of people, have, you know, that I'll be connecting with and staying with are like, oh, you know, we can do this and we can do that. And I'm like, no, nah. I just want to go and see some nature parts of Oregon. I'm not really that keen on going to San Francisco, but let's do a road trip and, you know, like just take our time. And, yeah, I don't have any desire to see any concrete that I don't have to see, but I'm all down for the mountains or the lakes or all of that stuff. Mm. So and just to enjoy that slowed down pace so that's my you know that i'm anticipating will be my venus and taurus lots of scotch lots of nature and lots of astrology (laughs) and it's also Cass, you'll be meeting people in real life like that's also that venus in taurus it's not the you know connecting over social media or in messaging you know it's it's the reality of those close connections every you know it certainly does exactly so You know, if you are kind of feeling a little bit like on the fringes in the astro community or just take or just connecting online, I mean, even if you can get to a conference, large or small, 110 percent, like get there in person, it'll change your life. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So quality time in person, in the flesh. Venus in Taurus is not interested in gadgets or online stuff. She wants to be IRL. Basically, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I remember at um, you know UAC, I kind of just perched myself at the bar, and <laughs> and I mean I wasn't even really like drinking that much because I was just talking to people, and I was kind of like you know Venus sitting at the bar, and I just had all these amazing conversations and people just kind of like connecting and, and going out. So you know Venus is that connection. Um, and that wanting to socialize and, you know, bring things together, but I didn't move. (laughs) Everybody was coming to me. It was so funny. So, but, um, yeah, take your time with things. And I find too, when Venus is in Taurus, um, you know, if you're craving something really yummy to eat, or I haven't done this for a really long time and it makes me feel really good, then, you know, dive into that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Treat yourself. I also feel like, Venus in Taurus as well is about what we value and it's valuing the real things, the realistic things, the physical things, the, the, the tangible things. Um, so it's not so much about the airy fairy of the Venus in Pisces. It's actually probably taking what Venus was revisiting there back in March and bringing it down and grounding it down into where we are now with that, that sextile part. So I think it's really a chance to actually ground in the everyday um, what we want to do. I was just reading Jack Cornfield. He wrote something on his social media post this morning about it's in the everyday that we actually can find our growth and our personal development. It's in the pushback on on the small things that happen every day. It's not in the big stuff. Mm. And I just thought, wow, actually that's really Venus in Taurus, that that making it real, making it tangible. Um, sort of finding the beauty in the routine or finding the beauty in the mundane in some respects. Mm. You and know, the, whereas and Venus and Pisces is a bit more like the divine or outside of yeah. the self rather than within. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's almost like it, it takes that divine and grounds it down, you know, because it's in yeah. the small acts of kindness and, and caring and those those be- very Venus things, um, you know, those sweet words we can speak to somebody else that actually helps lift everybody up, not just yeah. ourselves. So, yeah. Yeah, so some juicy, lovely things to enjoy. And mm. then, and then, Cass. <laughs> Mars and Cancer, are we yeah. ready for that? Or are we still well, vibing on Taurus? Well, I mean, you said we've got to take the spicy with the sweet, so we've done the sweet. Yeah, and I do like a bit of spice. I will admit that. Um, so, yeah, we've got Mars moving into Cancer. So that will be from um, May 15, May 16, um, and it will stay there until the very end, very beginning of July. So six weeks of Mars in watery mute cancer. So, you know, the thing is with Mars in cancer, you know, this is kind of like actions on our mood. Am I in the mood for this? Am I in the mood for that? 
Um, moving from Gemini, which is kind of like really fast paced and a little bit scattered, spreading this, yourself thin, you can always get to, you know, this week and kind of feel a little bit, you know, frazzled and then just wanting to, you know, withdraw into the shell a little bit or perhaps, um, you know, close off a little bit. Um, but I mean, with Mars in Cancer, there is, you know, some triplicity rulership. So I don't think it's, you know, maybe I'm just like flying the Cancerian flag here, but, you know, Mars and Cancer can sometimes, you know, not be a bad thing. It can energize a part of the chart or a part of your world that might sometimes be a little bit on the defensive or a little bit reactive. Whereas with Mars kind of moving through that, it might kind of help boost a little bit more of a proactive approach or getting things done. Um, what I love about, you know, this particular transit too, you know, we've just come out last month of, you know, a heavy uh, uh, Capricorn vibe with Saturn South Node, Pluto South Node. Now Mars is coming along and kind of stoking that fire. So it might be like, okay, well, I released all this stuff. I surrendered this stuff. I got to kind of ground zero with things and restructuring. Now Mars on the opposite side of that, there's that potential, I think, to, um, you know, move into the next direction or into the next phase. Also, given that the North Node is, you know, yeah. uh, co-present with that. So it's kind of gives that, you know, Cancerian, you know, I think sometimes we get a little bit of a, um, a, a rough trot, you know, we're not just like these moody whinges, you know, like we are kind of a little bit more feisty than what some people might give us credit for, particularly when our protective devices are charged up, right? So, mm. yeah, I mean, you know, Mars in Cancer, you know, we've got that kind of Venus and Taurus, Earth. We've got Mars in Cancer, Water. So we're going from that uh, active or assertive uh, duo into like a more passive or receptive. So it's definitely putting the feelers on take you know rather than mars and gemini going for all the shiny things now we've got mars and cancer oh i'm going to feel that before i decide to take action or i'm going to feel that before i make a choice or or i'm going to kind of you know feel it in my waters before i take action on something and so when you kind of activate your spidey senses with that sometimes you can make better choices um potentially I could yeah. go on about Mars and Cancer. Yeah, no, I, love I like Mars. that. I like that, Cass. It's like better choices because I think one of the differences between Mars and Gemini, which we've had for the previous six weeks, and Mars and Cancer, which is the new six-week motivation style or cycle we're starting, Mars and Cancer is a little bit more specific about what he wants and he's also more oriented towards the long term. There's a conservation or preservation quality to planets in Cancer where they do protect, they protect their loved ones, but they also protect their resources and they protect their rear, if you like. So there is a defensive quality mm. to Mars in Cancer and this can be practical in terms of I'm going to pay off that credit card because I'm going to defend myself against this ongoing interest bill type of thing. But it can also be defensive from that, you know, you have gone after someone I love and I just need to let you know that's not okay. Uh, so there is a really productive component for Mars in Cancer and it is a cardinal sign and cardinal signs versus the mutable Gemini where Mars mm. has been for six weeks. Mutable signs, now my chart's pretty heavy on mutable placement. So I'm not having a dig at anyone. And if I am, I'm including myself in this. Mutable planets spread themselves thin. They, they do like, they scatter really easily. Whereas cardinal planets are a little bit more goal oriented. They're like, there's a specific thing that I'm trying to either protect, defend or achieve. And Mars in Cancer particularly has, is starting to clarify. So I think that the back end of this week, with Mars in Cancer, it's like, what do you want to do that's going to give a gift to your future self? Um, totally. whether, whether you need to cut something off or put a barrier, whatever it is. Yeah, you guys get the gist. Oh, I'm very excited about yep. this because I think it'll be an interesting oh, energy I shift. Am. I'm really yeah. looking forward to this transit. And I mean, you know, our dear friend Austin Coppick and, you know, on the Astrology Podcast, you know, made his meat grinder. Um, I'm like, do we have to say the word? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah, I've spoken to many people who've been a little bit shattered by that statement. But I mean, 
you know, we are going to be entering, you know, Mars is kind of like tilling the soil or preparing us because basically when Mars finishes its time in Cancer, then the eclipses occur. I don't know, like to use to sort of, you know, fatten out that analogy, you know, perhaps the six weeks of Mars in Cancer is an invitation to maybe select the best cuts of meat, you know, make those good choices, um, you know, get decisive and don't allow your mood to depend your actions. It's like, okay, let's pull up our socks, you know, work towards despite the mood, you know, sometimes you've got to make that choice. I don't feel great today. I didn't have a great sleep. Well, Capricorn's on the other side and that cosmic shoulder's tapping on you. So don't let that kind of, you know, then that's the thing with Mars and can Cancer. Actions and achievements can be a bit mood dependent. If you're not in the mood, then nothing gets done. But you could also make that choice. I'm not going to do that. Mm, yeah. And I also feel, you know, cancer to me is the womb. Cancer to me is the breasts. Cancer is that place that nourishes and nurtures. So there is that energy with Mars and Cancer. It's like, how can we make the space for something to be able to grow, for something to be able to open up and, and change and shift? And I love the focus on the North Node because I feel like there's been so much focus on the South Node over the last few months. It's nice to shift our head back into that direction. Where do we want to yeah. go? What do we want to build? What do we want to grow with this? Um, I wrote recently about a quote in what the, um, the TV series Call the Midwife. And she's talking about, you know, she said, I need to care. I need to protect. I can't do efficiency and be, be cutting costs. Um, and that's the thing, you know, it was in this whole scene where, you know, they were moving from the old fashioned midwife style into hospitals where, you know, at the end uh, of the shift, yeah. you just leave the patient. You don't come back and look after her. And, and she was used to being with a patient all the time. And it's interesting mm. now as we hear, you know, we're actually moving back into that old model of being with mothers the whole time where they're birthing to stop the stress, to help her be um, calm and to birth well, because it's in the connections, it's, it's in the nourishment and the caring that really true healing lies. So I feel like we're actually in a time for real growth. And I feel like this Mars in cancer can really help, help that happen. Almost like, you know, Mars is, is, is strengthening that womb environment. So something can grow to a strongest. Mm. Yeah, and forming that lovely sextile to Venus in Taurus throughout mm. these, you know, dual transits, it's very much about that sort of nourishment and protection and growth. You know, where are we going to put our action and effort towards, as you said, Kel, something for the long term and for your future mm. self. So it's rather than, you know, and I always think of Mars as choices and what you choose now versus what you know, what ramifications will that have down the track um, or choosing what you want most as opposed to what you want now? Yeah. Yeah, that's really a good point. Like it's sort of delayed gratification really, isn't it? Yeah, that's always one of my favourite quotes. You know, whenever I have to make a choice, what do I want now versus what do I want most? And yeah. sometimes that can help me, okay, well, yes, I'm not buying those shoes today, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't always yeah. work because, you know, sometimes the Taurus side of me wins. But, you know, like it's, you know, Mars in Cancer I think gives us that opportunity to connect into that space. You know, it is the exoskeleton, the crab, you know, it's like what am I choosing to allow into my space or to see my soft parts? And, you know, if you have been too soft with some people, maybe Mars and Cancer will help you, you know, reinforce the armor plating, so to speak. And if you've been too hard, maybe it's, you know, maybe using Mars's sword to kind of, you know, break open the shell and, mm. and soften up a little bit. So um, uh, what does Brene sound, uh, say? Something like soft front, hard back or something like that. And, you know, Mars and Cancer gives us that opportunity to really tap into that analogy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's Because Cancer can be so vulnerable when it wants to be, when it wants to open up, you know, open up a little chink in the armour. So it's being in that vulnerable space and allowing that to happen, that, that the real change and the real connection happens. And as well, you know, Cancer likes to look to the past. I feel like with Mars there, it's like we can learn 
our, learn from our past mistakes or learn from where things were done well in the past and, and take that forward too. Yeah. You were going to say something, Kel? Well, Mars in Cancer has special uh, power this week because of the full moon that's coming up mm. on the weekend. Yes. Yeah. Because this is a full moon week and so that is going to flavour. It's sort of like the further the week goes, the more emotion and emotional energy is going to get stirred up. Builds up. Mm. And, uh, Leisha, you have some thoughts on the full moon in Scorp, I think. Yeah. Well, it is interesting with Mars in Cancer because you've got, you know, the moon ruled by Mars in Cancer, but then the Scorpio element of it looking at that Mars in Cancer too. Mm. So it, it is, it's, yeah, that mutual reception looking back there. So... You know, full moons are about release and Scorpio is about purification and detoxification. So it, it's almost like this is harking back into that Marie Kondo energy that we've been talking about with the, mm. with the south node in Capricorn. But I feel like we're doing this not so much about earthy, possessions and and but it's actually our emotional lives that watery environment that deep environment you know of all the water signs Scorpios like the deep ocean I always use the analogy of the Mariana Trench those things you know there's beasts hanging around there in the deep um, but you don't often go down there so the full moon in Scorpio kind of really it's like it opens up the valve to let that stuff out so letting it out, you know, letting that deep release happen, looking at whatever is possible with that to, to just purge. Um, I don't want to go into the gastro that went through our house recently, but I think just the <laughs> word kind of gives people a sense of that having to, you know, it, what it actually did was clear things out. And I must admit, it's the first Easter I've actually finished lighter than I started it. Um, <laughs> But you it, it tonight, is that yeah, it's, okay. it, it's that relief and that release in a way, and I felt a lot lighter in many levels, not just physically, but mm. um, but spiritually and emotionally as well, because I'd gotten everything out and I'd sweated it out, and and this is what that full moon is like. It's like right get rid of it all, purge it all out, let go what you can, you know, and and Scorpio's protective it's secretive as well so it might require some time on your own to do this it might require some time to sit and process it and feel it feel it feel it don't run away don't pretend it's not there don't push it down but I'll sit with those emotions and and feel them for me I'm always telling my counseling clients feel it in your body get in touch within the body. What's that emotion telling you? You know, is it a, is it a tingling in your stomach or is it, is there something going on in your heart space? Is your throat tight? And when you just sit with that and feel that it actually ends up releasing as well, because all it needs is a bit of attention on it to actually process it out. So yeah. What about you girls? What are you thinking with this full moon? I often think about the full moon in Scorpio as shining a light into the darkness. Um, mm. That idea of bringing, you know, the full intuitive moonlight because she's at her maximum strength this weekend. So the full moon will be kind of Saturday afternoon in Canada and the States and sort of Sunday morning um, in Australia. So it literally is a Saturday night full moon, which is just mm. going to add emotional intensity into the weekend. There is going to be a little bit of emotional drama too, um, and yeah, I think that idea of shining a light into the darkness. So gaining some insights about things that have been hidden or kept private, maybe even a revelation about something that is just, oh my God, I didn't know this, or there's more to this than I thought. Uh, there's a lot of layers of feeling. There's a lot of layers of whether it's history or backstory that need to be kind of explored, or if you at least need to become aware that there's more there than maybe what you think. So it's, this is, of all the weekends in May, this is the big weekend astrologically in terms of the energy and the potency, but also the emotional stuff that will get mm. stirred. What are you thinking, mm. Kath? Yeah, I agree with you. And not that I'm a huge fan, but I kind of think Scorpio Moon and what was that Eminem song when he was like, I'm coming out of the closet or something like that. There was some cleaning out the closet. And the fact that, you know, the ruler is Mars and Cancer. It's just ingressed into Cancer, so it's fresh in there. 
you know, I think, you know, the moon in itself is, you know, reflective and it can have associ- association with the past anyway. We have its ruler in Cancer. I think there will be that, you know, potential. Let's We've got to dig some stuff out of the past in order to move forward. Um, and then that sort of scorpio y Marsy vibe, it's like, well, we're either moving forward or we're not uh, in whatever situation, you know, comes up for you. And it might just be some of your own thoughts about something or, a, you know, a choice that's totally not, you know, emotionally based. It could be work or it could be do I take this job or do I not take that job? But, I mean, mm. there is this kind of sense that, I've got to look at some of my past patterns to decide which direction I'm going. And the Scorpio moon in its fullness is not about hiding anything. So it's definitely, um, you know, uh, coming out of, you know, whatever skeletons in the closet or whatever is you've been hiding or, you know, it's coming out. Um, yeah. And then I'm also reminded of just a, a more, maybe simple or accessible manifestation of the full moon in Scorpio, which is to encourage everyone to check what house in your birth chart this Mm. is falling in for you. And the reason for me to say that is I was like, oh, that's the Saturday that I'm teaching in New York. So I'm traveling to a different country to do some teaching, which are all ninth housey type things Mm. and the full moon in Scorpio will be in the ninth house in my personal astrology chart. So it might be a trip that's really insightful or thought provoking. Um, It might lead to a little bit of, you know, a new insight about my technique or what have you. But sometimes there can be these almost literal manifestations of the astrology. Like there's a big thing going on in this part of your chart. And so your weekend is all about whatever that part of your chart is. So Uh, You know, my husband's going to fly down. We're going to have a couple of days in New York, which is great. I'm going to work. He's going to sightsee. We'll have a meal out together, you know, and then, of course, we're coming home to to move to Europe later um, this year. So it's just it's like a bit of a fun sort of um, but international teaching oriented trip, if you like. Yeah, I totally hear you on the practical element of it. Um, And I sort of just came up with this myself the other day and was thinking, well, what am I doing this weekend? And uh, so, you know, this is the weekend I fly out to the oh, States. Of course. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's you know very early Monday morning, which means I'll be there Sunday night. And then I'm sort of thinking, well, I was going to t- uh, keep – I used to be quite nocturnal before I became a mom. And so I'm going to sort of stay up as – you know, do, pull a couple of all-nighters if possible – just to start getting my body in the rhythm for a massive time zone change. And so the full moon is in my sixth house. So I'm just sort of thinking about my schedule, my time management, planning and things like that for, of course, the sun, Uranus and everything else in the 12th when I take uh, my bon voyage across the Pacific again. So, yeah, it's, you know, and I don't expect any, you know, huge emotional revelations around that. Who knows? But I'm just going to be pulling a couple of all-nighters, you know, howling with the moon (laughs) here in Brisbane. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, How about you, Lishi? Have you got anything going on? It's your eighth, isn't it? So, yeah, you might have the more emotional tone to it potentially. Yeah, well, that'll actually be the first weekend I will have been, I will be home and not working. Um, and mm. I am going to hole up in my house and do nothing that weekend. Oh, so, good. yeah. Yeah, that'll be six weeks of, uh, yeah, straight of working or being away. So I am really looking forward to that secretive Scorpio time with that double Scorpio mm. daughter of mine um, and my lovely mutable son who probably won't notice anything. So. Love it. I just realized too, that's a long weekend in Canada. I think it's a, uh, it's like the first big sort of summer spring holiday weekend. So for people who are away opening up cottages and things this weekend, uh, yeah, you know, full moons, everybody's more susceptible to alcohol and other substances. So, Mm. you know, people just absorb more easily. So just be more mindful about whatever you're imbibing this weekend. Um, just, I'm glad yeah. I won't be working in an ER or anything like that that weekend, oh, to be honest. No. Yeah, good luck to the police. Yes. So that's the week. Is there what, what else, anything else we need to say? 
No. Anything that's going on for you gals this week? Cass, you're flying out. Kel, you're yeah, in New York. Yeah, just prep and flying. We're just going to be jet setters this weekend. <laughs> yeah, aren't we? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so that event in New York, New York NCGR Progressions Workshop with me on Saturday, May 18th. Uh, but other than that, uh, Yeah, we'll all be um, in Seattle as of Monday afternoon. So if anybody is about or around to hang out for a couple of days, I'll be... Just, you know, doing my thing up there. So looking forward to that. Nice. And I will have a half price sale starting with Venus going into Taurus. So from I think that'll be Wednesday here in Australia, hop onto my website and take advantage of 50% off my sessions. Awesome. Excellent. So shall we wrap up there? That's it. Thanks, gals. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Hop on and, um, you know, if you like what we're doing, press subscribe on either SoundCloud or YouTube or iTunes. Are we on, are we, are, we're on iTunes, yeah? Yes, yeah. Stitcher, okay. we're on lots of different things, but um, I, we're, I think we're, yeah, I don't know if we're on. Anyway, but, yes, wherever we're you're listening to us on or watching, <laughs> hit subscribe. We're, it's weekly. The goodness comes out every week. So thanks, gals. Thanks, Thanks, Kel. Thanks, Leishy. See you later. Bye, everyone.